let's take a look at those starting sevens. Down this South Africa side, they're dripping with talent. Yeah, rock solid from end to end. Potgita and Holthausen, a world-class shooting combination. Speed to burn through the midcourt. And Somi, Berger and Van der Merwe. And arguably an unbelievable defensive duo, Carla Pretorius and Pumza Mawani at the back. Uganda just as strong as well, spearheaded by Peace Prescovia. What a story she is and what a star she is as well. And then Fuka at the back at goalkeeper. Two great bookends for Uganda, critical today. Everyone wants to be on this court tonight. First centre pass then to South Africa. Good drive along the baseline from Holthausen. Very deceptive along that part of the court. Slaps the hands together, a confident start from the South African goal attack. Although, Caroline, we're watching two African nations go head to head, two very different styles. South Africa play a really well structured, organised, almost an Australian game in many ways where Uganda will play a little bit shorter, a little bit more unorthodox, and then release the high ball up to Peace Proscovia. So calm under the post from Proscovia. Oh, look at the space created. All about the hard work along that baseline. Yeah, and good patience from Berger on the feed. She had trust in her goalers to open at the last minute. Potgita in prime shooting position. They don't mind being patient in their build-up round court, Uganda. But it's the great defensive work being done by South Africa in front of them at the moment. Three-second call, so good suffocating defence from the Proteas. It'll be key for Uganda to stay in touch early in this game because, as we've seen throughout this World Cup, South Africa more than capable of putting the foot down and ripping teams apart. Meme will do that throughout all four quarters. A little bit of a change up. They've tried a couple in that wing attack position, Uganda. Take it back. That's it. Great stronghold from Potgita. Clear to see. Such an unorthodox shooting style that changes all the time. It's fascinating to watch. She was a real miss at the, the Commonwealth Games. It did the ankle before going in. And how important she's proved to be at 97% already. Yeah, you just feel with the Proteas that this is, this is their time. They were probably ready at the Gold Coast to do something, but injury struck them and obviously really derailed their campaign. But a fully fit team, some more players that have had at least some exposure on the bench now to get out there if required. But this starting seven, gee, it's world class across the board. Both weapons at both end of the court for Uganda and for South Africa. Just about getting those feeds in. And again, that defensive work from South Africa. See Pretorius just screening off there too. Proscovi will go back. And Meme too. And Oyela getting involved in the action. Three Sunshine Coast Lightning athletes in that goal circle. So this will be very familiar for Prescovia, almost like a training drill every day of the week against her two teammates. The way she plays netball, though, you feel like every game's a bit of a training drill for, isn't it? Absolutely. Subtraction here, attack. Subtraction sent up. Back with the sent up. Oh, great Lightning movement from Bongyam Somi. And the quick release on the feed too. It's a part of her game that's really improved in recent years. Sight the shooter, let it go. Feel the instinct of it. A good touch okay, on it. Good strength from Stella Oyala. And 
she's had quite the tournament already from players of the match to being suspended to being sent off another key player for Uganda up the other end what can they do defensively Wing defense contact where you are. Well, Oyela really is important in today's game just to take some of the focus away from Peace and just give her a little bit of support that she doesn't feel like she's carrying the entire team in that goal circle. And as we've just seen, she's more than comfortable to put up the shot, so more of them will be of huge advantage for them. Yella, like standing as if time stood still then too. Just all that movement around her, playing on the edge of the three. Contact causing Zeta. It's a good ball and good position from Prescovia. Just got Pumza Mawani stuck on her back. Exactly where she wants her to present a strong front option. Sided well from the feeders. So much body on body as they were all trying to make their way through. They're congested, but the upper body strength from Uganda there. South Africa again. Wing defense contact. Go right over. That's it, wing attack. Because it wasn't so sure about that call. Appreciating the work of our goal teammates again, though. Contact. Hit. Beside the goalkeeper. They're trying to confuse that space inside the circle, Dan, but just maybe need to pay attention to, to how much joy they're getting on that centre pass South Africa at the moment. Yeah, and they will need to be a little bit mindful of their penalty count too, that every time there's a penalty, there's a stoppage. South Africa can set up a structure or a strategy when you really want against these good teams is continually build pressure to try and force some errors. So every penalty is a release of that pressure and then you're back to zero. So something they'll need to be really clear in their decision making. But they're doing well in this front end, that's for sure. A pretty reasonable start from Uganda. Everyone sat at 100%. Who blinks first? That will help. Well, they've got to make the most of this. It's really important that they can prove to themselves they can capitalise on a turnover, take it to goal. Prescovia all the way out of the circle. Just stuck over this transverse line. It's good pressure from South Africa. Oyela this time trying to help out. And Proskovia head down, driving forward. Beautiful. How's the height on that shot too? Touching the roof. And the patience too on the build-up. Really good to see. If one thing all countries can learn from the African nations, it's how to keep possession. Okay, goalkeeper. And they're confident. With the goalkeeper. Chance to level it up here. Halfway through the first quarter. Oyela steps. Oh, I'm fighting between each oh, other. No. All four of them in that circle touched it before I the pick up from the Proteas. Quickly through court. Bit of fortune, maybe. But it's how clinical South Africa have been when they're in that circle. Body contact wing defence. Well, that's good defence from Nanfuka. She made Potgita well, have to refeed time. based on the pressure. And this one will be tight. There will be fine margins in this match. They've just got to make sure when they get an opportunity, Uganda or South Africa, they take it. Fighting to contact. Hold time. Centre those obstructions. They're becoming persistent. If there's something is, Potgita needs to add into her game over the next couple of months. It's certainly just an extra range in her shot. She's very reliant on getting the ball close to the post and often does because she has an unbelievable split to get nice and close. But on that occasion there, she's probably within range and more than capable of sinking those ones. We'll have to take those shots in the pressure games come a semi-final or a final, so really mindful of that. We saw her put those shots up when she played Super League in the UK. So a different prospect where she is at the moment and the sort of level of netball has come on in both countries since that stage good land quick hands from south africa Pausing contact yeah the defense from shadeen van der merva really clean around the body pogita again in her favorite position here's the work outside arm quick on the take two well executed Oh, Sorry, you can't give her a chance. Up. 
Good combination with Adjo in there. Yeah, tenacious in everything. Uganda. <laughs> Almost a dance move in front that didn't put her off that time. <laughs> nine from nine from Lanise Potgita so far in this beat. first quarter. Five and a half minutes to play. Pretty good opening. Just that little gap opening up for South Africa. Oh, Pretoria so good. <laughs> Stella Oyala will know she's been in a game today because Pretorius will be all over her for the full 60 minutes. As slight as she looks sometimes. She's just all arms, elbows, isn't she? Awkward in that circle. She is, and you probably don't appreciate how good she is unless you watch her in isolation and just watch how much work she makes her goal attack too. And then all of a sudden she's going to sit off for a moment and come swooping through for an amazing intercept. She really is, as a lot of people are saying at the moment, the best goal defence in the game. And for, for a reason too, she is absolutely outstanding. And getting better, which is scary. <laughs> Barney's moving off wing defence. Oh, a close again from Nanfuka. Uganda. The quick release from Potgita doesn't even really set the shot. Turn and throw, and in it goes. Doesn't really give Uganda a chance in that circle. Game just quick through the transition. This time better. Contact, goal defence. Goal defence come up. Throwing almost side. everything at South Africa at the moment. Barney's gone, contact, goal keeper. South Africa. Good preparation on the centre pass from Bongi Somi. A slight dodge, shift the defence, gets the freedom to then Contact, take the ball cleanly. Defense. Nice weighted ball over the top to her you spearhead. They've got Namwe as an option perhaps in that defensive end. At 5'10 though, it's very much the height advantage to South Africa as she was to come on. But with the score doubled, maybe just a little bit more joy needed at the other end for Uganda. Step in from Oyela. Big goal. Yeah, Uganda needed that one just to stop the, stop the flow of South Africa, putting on a bit of a, a charge here in the last couple of minutes. Scoring goals a little bit more easy. Good shooter to shooter connection. Such a slick partnership, those two. Uganda. We talk about that perhaps not having the strength in depth for South Africa, but when you've got those combinations on court that work so well for them, if they can allow the seven to ride yeah. it out. Amazing. Well, Exhibit it's, A. It's about the intricate understanding Bunny of the partnership, and that's what defense. South Africa are doing Bunny extremely well. Holthausen and Pochita know ex each other inside and out. The defensive circle is unbelievably in sync. And then the midcourt too, they've been playing together for a long time, so they know where they're going to be. And this stuff is the stuff that matters come a pressure semi-final or a medal match because you've got to have full faith that your teammate is right on board with you and really understand each other in those moments. So Norma has really given this team the chance to consolidate the lineup. And they now have a few more players on the bench that can get out there and play a role if required. But these are the chosen seven. There's no question about that. The chosen Uganda. seven. Sounds mythical. And that's almost <laughs> what Norma Plummer, former Aussie coach, brings to this side. 14 goals, 14 attempts, 100% what you expect now. So the Proteus playing a bit of a diamond here, shutting down the middle, trying to have a fly at the ball, just sitting in spaces. Really challenging the decision-making of their opposition. Good switch in the circle. <laughs> Scovia, too good. Look at the lean. Again on taking that and the shot. Or yellow on the rebound. There are some of the options. Siggy Berger, again, has been playing in the Super League in the UK. Contacting defence. Barney's obstruction centre. Uganda. So confident. Barney's As we approach quarter time then, Dan, do you make a change at defensive end for Uganda? 
Well, it's an interesting one because it depends whether the coach thinks they're obviously their top lineup is on there. Do you give them a bit more time to try and withstand and absorb the pressure, or do you make a change and try and make some inroads? Because you've got to read your bench there and see whether they're going to make an impact or whether your best players are out there at the moment. So that's the decision the coach will need to make. Perhaps they might have anticipated a scoreline like that, so you're not too sure what their expectations would have been going into the game. But South Africa certainly have come to play today and pretty ruthless in this opening 15 minutes. Eight goals down. What defensive work can they do now? Goalkeeper contact. It's probably more around the speed the ball's coming to the circle edge for South Africa that is the problem for Uganda. If that ball flies onto the circle edge with Potgita at the end of the line, that circle will really stand no chance. So it's the pressure up the court that matters. Keep them away from the attacking end. Last 10 seconds then of this quarter. Nine goals are different. They need to be quick about it. Huta goes inside, but the umpire's clock says different. And Proscovia put one up, doesn't stand. So very much in that first quarter, South Africa came out as expected. Norma Plummer's side wanted to lay down a marker in that first 15, the speed of which they passed that ball, able to carve open the defensive end of Uganda, just causing problems at the moment. Nine goals, the difference. A really clean opening 15 minutes from the South Africans. They'll be looking to push on again here, and we'll see if Uganda can just stem the flow of this South Nine African onslaught. Contact with the bits. Was a full-on juggernaut in that first 15, and Pogita very that. much part of that. A good coverage from Van der Merwe. Offside. Really Free good pass. contest. Clean Sorry, on the South inside Africa line. Gold third, gold third. And they come away with it too. And Somi just keep going for this South Africa team. Just trying to create options around that circle. Don't need her though. Speak about maybe not the range of, of Potita, but we're seeing in that circle they do have options with Holtzhausen. She's she's not afraid to shoot a bit further out. Absolutely not. It's it's one of her absolute key weapons as a goal attack, her ability to go to the post from range. She's a real key to their medal chances, I believe, because obviously a lot of attention will be focused on Potgita, and she does do the bulk of the shooting, and rightfully so, but there are going to be times in pressure situations where Holtzhausen needs to be the one to nail it, and she's more than capable. So together as a partnership, they're just as important as each other. So really keen to see how they go, particularly against England tomorrow when the pressure's going to be on massively. He says with a twinkle in his eye. <laughs> yeah, England, South oh, Africa, who takes the group, who finishes top of the group, and then will face second in the other side of the draw. It's Still actually a netball to go first. It's actually a really big moment for South Africa tomorrow. Obviously, they'll get, they'll need to get through this game, and as it's going at the moment, they should do it in a comfortable South fashion. Africa. But tomorrow is a massive test because they're in a, they're in a major competition where they've never really had a history of beating the top teams consecutively. So they know they've knocked off Jamaica. If they can knock off England tomorrow, the amount of confidence that's going to give them, they would then start thinking, we can actually win this. Okay, Whereas previously in a quad series or whatever it might be, they always take up. one we're major scalp and they just agonisingly fall short in the next Come big up. opportunity. So Around. it's a huge night for them tomorrow. And of course, Around. England were the major scalp yes. at the quad series back at the start of this year. Now focusing, though, on the World Cup. Potgita does that so well in offering support to her goal attack. Just the lunge, the hand out. They have their own personal slow-mo, don't they? So it just <laughs> calms everything down in that circle. Great work from Vandermo. Just defense. called there, but she was buzzing around the back of them. Throwing Uganda, we area. The key for Uganda in this goal circle, if, if you watch really closely, is the timing of when Carla Pretorius drops back into the two-on-one with Pumza Mwani. As soon as she's in the two-on-one, it's not going in there. It just can't. So the release has to come from the midcourt quite early and quite quick to try and get them in the one-on-one -on -one position. But the way they play the two-on-one hedge in there as a, as a defensive duo, so good. South Africa. And Pumza 
Oani again, the one who's played in the UK with seven starts. So quick again on the transition from South Africa. Don't give Uganda a beat. Oh, and then it rolls around. It was a great attempt from long range too. Worth taking, taking a crack at it. And you just see again the, slut, the subtle change in her shot technique. But she's regressing it. <laughs> All the stats, she's now missed one. How yeah. dare she? 94%. Pick it up. Confirmation of the seven on court then. Nanyonga. Contact, goal defence. In that wing attack position. Beside the goal defence. She's a really handy goal attack, Nanyonga, as well. We saw her play a lot there in other major tournaments. Very crafty, one-handed shooter. Certainly became known at the Commonwealth Games as doing the Nanyonga. <laughs> There's the beauty of Potgita, just able to release the circle, play on the outside. Get astray with that offload. And an opportunity here for Uganda. Meme with it. Yellow comes out. It's Rachel Nanyonga. Obstruction goal keep up. Short. Inside the circle. Sometimes the telegraph passes work, don't they? Just the lovely little offload. Gap back to nine then. Oh, great space found and just again that movement. And there's how that trio actually work and how well they split apart that defensive yeah, end. Yeah, terrific understanding and beautiful placement of the pass right into the space. Again, Prescovia Contact, drawn South out of the Africa circle. Center. Contact, wing defence, knee. Right over. Come over. So difficult when you're caught between That's that, it. trying to force something wing to get something up. working for your team. Subtraction, advantage goal. Those combinations working better, though, on the edge of the circle, at least for Uganda. Ah, oh, Bongi and Somi. We see that so often when she plays for, for Wasps in the Super League. Just that beautiful weight behind the ball. It's just the placement. It's something she's really refined over the last couple of years. Sees the space of her shooter really, really well. And then just has the present of mind to execute the pass with the right amount of touch. And as we, as we heard pre-game, it was something Norma really had to teach these players because they were guilty of being quite reckless with the ball in, in pressure situations and in, and in previous years. So just that touch, that execution, the placement, it's the little one percenters that make a massive difference. And you can just see the impact it's had on the quality of netball they play. They've got it in bucket loads. The skills is just knowing when to use it. And so many of them with a the little bounce. And Berger again. Uh, good fight there from Potdita and the backup from Pretorius. Just off the circle from Bongi and Somi to release the pressure. Holtzhausen yeah, sends it. It's a good chase, full stretch, out she goes. Adjo and Memi combining as well to make sure that one gets down to Proscovia and then Oyela. South Africa. So good drive from Oyela, better use of the ball, moving it a little bit quicker. Halfway through this second quarter, not letting them get away. Okay, goalkeeper. Yes. Actually, all the square on the quarter score. Seven goals apiece. It's to go behind again. You've seen a slight adjustment. I know we've seen 
the change on court for Uganda, but it seems to be working better. Well, they're just not scoring goals with the same amount of ease as what they were in the first quarter. There's some really good transverse line pressure being built by Uganda, just making South Africa play a, play a couple of extra passes. And sometimes that's all, it, that's all it takes to get the disconnections to start appearing. So they're doing a good job at just applying that pressure a little bit Vardy's more tightly. Contact, goal attack, advantage, wing obstruction. And just an opportunity gone. Again by the pressure built, but brilliant <laughs> hands in. Just the last second poke and away they come. An important play here for them to level up this second quarter. Contact goal and attack. Nanyonga who started that move. That's a better opening to find Prescovia. The goal attack in the front position, drawing one of the defenders away. It opens up to Prescovia. So a move started by Silva Nanyonga with that defensive work. Rachel Nanyonga part of it. And Prescovia finishing things off. Back up the other end. Contact with the bit outside. Just see how it lifts the whole team now that they are hustling a bit more. Timeout called. Yes. Bit of sweat on the court. They'll come and wipe that. Now, while this is, is happening, it's also a, a little chance for everyone to take a breather. And any more adjustment you'd like to see from this Uganda side? Well, I think probably it's now just a matter of being really patient on attack. And they need to ensure that to stay in touch here, every centre pass matters. So it's a fine line between just playing the possession game until the space is open but then also having the confidence to let the ball go quickly into peace because one-on-one, -on -one, just like that, right idea, but just the execution. So Hold that's time. where they've just got to find that balance between chipping it away, get to circle edge, but then also the opportunity Contact, where they might attack. be able to get the defenders caught off guard with a really quick long ball that might come in and expose the backspace. So they've got to be disciplined with that and pick their moments. Uganda then looking to Contact change outside. things up, but... South Africa so far so good as they hunt down the semi-final place. South Africa. It was interesting, I bumped into to Bongi and Sami before the World Cup started and, and said, Bongi, how are you feeling? How's the team? What a great opportunity okay. it is this time around. And she just said, Dan, you know what? It's so good to be at a World Cup and we're not talking about hoping we don't lose by 30 goals, but actually what we can achieve as a team. And I think the four years since Sydney, the growth the team has had, unbelievable. And uh, on the verge of a really unbelievable sporting moment if they can get themselves a medal. And, you know, Norma's plan coming in, she said she'd be delighted if her team could get into the four. Contact Many people hoping and thinking maybe a medal is within reach too. Obstruction centre, both out. All four African teams making it through to the latter stages. South Africa, the real hope to take it into the semi-finals. Ten goals up, Norma Plummer's side. How about the battle between these coaches? Plummer, Tarua, Neville, Alexander. That is four unbelievable Money's coaches contact, going head to head if that's the way it plays out. And those are the margins, right? Totally. Those calls when they make the subs, defense, contact. how they line up. That's and that's why the, the two matches on Money's Thursday become so key. Australia that, up against New Zealand, England up against South Africa. Who shows their cards? Who shows Money's how they're going to tactically attack. approach it? Knowing that all four of those will end up in the mix should this result go South Africa's way tonight. I think the general public and, and the fans here at Liverpool are really keen to see where Australia and New Zealand actually sit. We've seen Jamaica and England both tested Line by Jamaica, deeper. obviously, okay, and goalkeeper. they've all passed that Where's test well. One Tomorrow, deeper, another big goalkeeper. test for both of those countries. But to really get a clear, I guess, summation on where New Zealand and Australia sit, we won't know until they go head to head tomorrow. So you think about the end of the tournament, and it's probably going to come down to coaching moves and which of the big name players step up and deliver. So how exciting are the next five days of this competition going to be? And the fact the pressure's off you, Danny, you can stand up here and watch it. <laughs> Correct. A few more games for Northern Ireland, but uh, too true. Cannot wait to see the big guns go head to head as well. Dan Ryan, coach of Northern Ireland at this World Cup. Contact, goal attack. Contact, wing defence. Just a few little 
niggly bits in both passages of play. So much netball been played over the last six days, though, although both had that rest day yesterday. As we approach half-time, just maybe feeling it a bit in the legs. Carla Pretorius really starting to wear down Ayala now. She's just finding it a little bit more difficult to get her hands on the ball. A little bit harder to drive the circle. That's what Pretorius does. Obstruction. She makes playing yeah, goal attack really not fun. I think uh, Peace Proscovia said she'd quit netball if she had to play goal attack <laughs> again. Imagine if she had to do it in this one. Under a minute and a half left then. And him over with it. Into Berger. A little bounce into Umsomi, but this time better. They can win this quarter here, Uganda. This is an amazing effort in the second term. It's 11 apiece. This chance to go ahead by one. What a response. Contact centre, goalkeeper. One step back, shooter. Heading into this one, South Africa had lost just the two quarters in the World Cup so far, and that was against Jamaica. Uganda. And with that, Uganda go a goal ahead in the quarter. And their centre pass. Nanyonga using that unorthodox style. Out of the circle, good land from her. Proskovia in space, great splits from Peace Proskovia to go two up in this quarter. The speed of the ball, the quick release, the confidence. Look at the impact that can have. What a quarter from Uganda. Last few seconds then. South Africa still with ball just in hand. Berger looking for a feed. You've already been cautioned for obstruction. That's now warning. And it's delaying. Bring the penalty in. Bring the penalty Maybe in. Maybe now Center, you're out of walking Come that tightrope. Come in. Goal attack. Caution yeah. against the centre. What it does do, though, is just counts down that clock some more. Uganda. And it looks like Uganda, all they need to do is keep ball in hand just for those last couple of seconds. And they nick the quarter off South Africa. Well, coming into this one, we just mentioned it, just a couple of quarters dropped by South Africa, but they've lost that one to Uganda just by the single goal. They hold that overall lead, though. 31 plays 23. It was a 19-10 first quarter for South Africa. That overall lead, then, as we head into the third quarter. Uganda's centre pass then. Northern Ireland coach Dan Ryan alongside me. We want to see that quick movement from Uganda. That's where they got the most success in that first period. Yeah, really interested to see how South Africa come out of this half-time break, to be honest. I think there might have been some stern words from Norman Plummer in that half-time period because they won the first quarter 19-10, lost the second 13-12, and there is no chance in hell that Norman would be happy with that. So they really want to ensure that there's the consistency across the game because other teams will be watching this and they'll see that there's been that slight drop off in the second period. So Norman will be wanting more, expecting more, and as Norma does, demanding more from her team. As we look around court, we can see Bongi Somi, South Africa captain, is on the bench. Rizal takes the ball there and that wing attack position is on. Oh, just a little bit of miscommunication. But Uganda's bench celebrated that like they just scored five goals. Oh, it's a big opportunity here early in the third quarter. They've got their tails up, Uganda. Confirmation of those sevens then at the bottom of your screen. Uganda with it. Agio and Kizza combining. Nanyonga comes out for it. Oyela and Proskova are still at that attacking end for Uganda. It's so unorthodox, it's just chip away, oh, chip away, it. chip away. And because they're great athletes, they get away with it. Gonna wear you down. It totally will, and that's what happens. The more you play the ball around, the more you give a Carla Pretorius the opportunity. Ping for the replay, though. They'll have the centre pass to follow here too, so they need to attack this passage of play. Show some confidence and conviction. 
Oh, Praskovia, two on one. And still breaking through. Well, it just got stuck a little bit in mid-court, but when they find their way through to that circle, they put a run on, and Uganda, a couple of goals up already in this quarter. They can take it back to five here, which will be huge in the context of this match. Might make the Proteas just get a little bit anxious. Well, we saw them ride out a spell of pressure from Jamaica in what was arguably one of the games of the tournament so far to put South Africa in this position where they're breathing down the necks of the semi-finals. How will they respond here? Well, they need a goal on the board here, South Africa, just to steady the ship slightly. Construction goal keep up. It's been a cracking opening from Uganda. their opposition. 32-26. Such is the level of intensity in this one that so quickly back to within just six goals, which is nothing at this level. It seems to me like there's a really clear, distinct game plan to get Prascovia on lead and pull Pumza Mwani away from the post, and Stella Ayala is driving that baseline through. We saw previously it was just a post-up game to Prascovia, but the versatility, it's causing a few troubles. Yeah, she doesn't matter if she's on the lean. She's out Contact or in. Defense. They've got that combination in the circle. Barney's moving off wing defence. Barney's obstruction centre. Well, there was a couple of times then when perhaps Holtzhausen could have gone for it herself. Ugenda. The same result. Good drive from Nanyonga, strong. So often rave about her in that goal I attack position, but the work that Rachel Nanyonga's putting in at wing attack. Well, I think too, Ayala's proven to be a real threat going to post. She's not afraid to put up the shots, and she's actually scored more than Peace Prescovia. And there lies the reason why they are so in this game, because it's not so much about Peace anymore. Ayala is saying, pay attention to me too, because I'm this good. Something to think about then for South Africa. Uganda. Real speed, and she said that drive now coming from Uganda. Wing defense contact. This gives South Africa a chance to regroup, though. Oh, but <laughs> just go over the top. I thought that was going to hit Zoe H, but up she went. Rips it out of the air. What a lift up. Nanyonga, the right Contact arm bullet. Center. Awesome. Beside this contact, goalkeeper. But it's contact, wing defence. All sorts of little bits of contact still in that circle. Uganda. Still that six goals they can't break at Barney the moment. Wing. So they lead this quarter six goals to four. With this play on their centre pass here, so they've got good control of this turn. And just patient, loving the approach. The I swing to Kizza that opens down. up. Great use of the ball. Just extending across every board, using the full court, drawing them out. Now within five goals. Pressure back on South Africa. They've ridden it so well so far, though. Well, and again. Again, still, they're scoring Uganda. goals easier, but they're struggling to turn it over defensively. So, you know, this defensive team may be in a little bit of a concern as to how they're going to try and win the ball. A reminder, a win for South Africa will send them through to the Netball World Cup semi-finals for the first time, and England with them. So close. Can we saw that 
in that those first couple of quarters just getting in each other's way. Like How's the desperation yeah. from Carla Pretorius? They were the all side. in a contest for that one. The first one there, though, Contact. it's always Carla. Does Bobby it so side. well. The Outside second, the third Bobby effort. Defense. It's a real lesson to any young defender watching that the ball is never dead as a defender. So really well done. And at a time, too, where her team really needs the it. The Just the one up. world ranking between these two. Now very much, though, head game two. Oh, that's great center. coverage in the circle. Shutting Barney down the baseline on Holthausen. Brilliant one-on-one -on -one defense. Uganda. On just sucks a little bit of the oh. air. <laughs> Fortunate, planned all the way. Is that one in your copybook? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> South Africa just filling a bit of space here. Just trying to keep them out of the middle. Challenge the decision making. Present something different to the opposition. Is that the wobble stabilised? Nanyonga still finding some space through. Peace wants it. Up strong. Such body on body, such contest inside that, that circle now. Contact, wing defence. thought about it again, Contact didn't she? Center. Well, it's a good tactic from Nanfuka, the goalkeeper of Uganda, sitting behind the Lanise Potgita, pushing her away from her comfort zone, knowing very well that she's going to go the refeed if she lands the ball in that position. So sometimes defenders obviously are always taught quite often to play the front position. But some of these goal shooters that do choose to shoot from just under the post, you want to get behind and shuffle them out, make them handle the ball, refeed from behind is just as good sometimes. Well, this one going like the last quarter. Going All South square Africa. at the moment. But there's the cheer oh, from the South on. Africa bench. And that says something. They can really sense how hard it's been to win the ball off Uganda. So when they do, celebrations like that take place. Eight goals all in this quarter. Eight goals, the difference on court. Oh, oh. get out, so good. Contact Just the presence of mind on that. Really well done. When you've got players flying at you left, right and centre, and just the calmness of that. Yeah, that's, that's experience. Big hit from Holtzhausen. She's all right. Defense. Contact, wing defence. Is that... Change bringing Grizel on a uh, wing Come attack, up. taking Bongi and Somi off. Has that it. disrupted South Africa at all? They've taken a little bit of speed Contact, out of their front line, defense. but perhaps maybe just a little bit more of a slower build up to goal. And I think Norma Plummer reads Bongi and Somi really well when she feels sometimes that she's buzzing around a little bit too much and getting caught up in the contest. She needs to sit and watch the game and then get back into it. So if there's a coach that knows her athletes incredibly well, it's Norma. And maybe she just felt like she wanted something a little bit more steady, take the pace off a little bit, and maybe that's what she's getting uh, in the service from her wing attack in this third quarter. They're back out to a two-goal lead in this term now. So the move, you'd say, has worked well for them. Always takes time to settle. Great ball side pressure. They're really trapped on this side of the court. Struggling to find an opening. Trying everything to oh, draw South out. Africa out. <laughs> oh, she went oh, for it. It's exactly what they're setting up. When they put all the pressure on ball side, they're expecting the opposition to put the ball in the air and send it to the opposite side. Exactly what Pumza Mwani was looking for as she comes out on the fly. We're going to see a change. And it's going to be Nanfuka heading off court for Uganda. So just thinking perhaps that they were getting still some joy in that circle and the change being made. Let's see how that works and then we're coming on for Uganda. Wing defence contact. 
Oh, an awkward take, just having her feet taken out from underneath her. Berger takes the penalty. The feet is on at the post. They choose to go the front option. Contact, goalkeeper. Where you are, see the goalkeeper, come up. You might want to mark that one down, not something we see very often. <laughs> not happy with that, was she? Oh, just trying to force it. Just starting to come undone a little bit in the Ugandan front line. They've just lost their patience they had at the start of this third quarter and also that they showed in the second. Just a little bit reckless yep. with the long ball and they need to keep playing it around. And again, credit Contact to the South African defence, just building the pressure, forcing Contact the error. Uganda centre, goal third. And the game now just starting to open up slightly. Uganda, touch the South African, free pass, Colin. We'll go off the wing attack, off the wing attack, Uganda throwing. Well, throw in here for Uganda, so another opportunity off the hook here if they can capitalise their centre pass. Good double play through midcourt. There's the long ball up to Oyela. Prescovia wants it. Just oh. resetting and finding that space for herself. That Contact, goal <laughs> step in. Love the timing on the pop forward from Prescovia. Again, it's that versatility. Not always wanting the ball up and into back space, but punching onto it. Very hard to defend when there's so much variety in what she can offer. South Africa. So the young goalkeeper on for Uganda, Mohai Namwaya. Oh, she just tried to put a backside in. Contact, end offside, ended up on court. Back up again. Well, you can see what you're going to get from her Uganda. in that circle. Energy. Yeah, well, it's willing and moving the feet with great ferocity as well. They'll need some turnovers in there to get right back into this game. Ten goal margin. Less than a minute and a half in this quarter remaining. Offside. Goal third. Sorry, centre third. Centre third, offside. Aside from that first 15 minutes, nothing between these two sides. One goal in it to Uganda in the second. South Africa by two here in the third. Looking to make it just one if Uganda can convert here. Okay, if they could Uganda. tie up this quarter. wonder what that would have put on South Inside Africa, but this one just helps those nerves a stage further. Good take from Grizel. Barney to contact in defence. Contact. Yeah, nice feed arm. over the top. Where you are, shoot up. Well weighted pass. South Africa. Well, Norma Plummer would have expected this to be tight Barney on court. Construction centre. Wonder how much it's taking out of South Africa ahead of their big match up tomorrow against England. Uganda. How quick was that shot from Pocky to pick it up off his shoelaces That's when and they bang. Get success, isn't it? Attack. Check your shoelace <laughs> through the net. Last few seconds of this quarter then. Uh, good defence from the attackers. You know you're in full flight when you're winning ball as an attacker. Oh. Oh. Well, she went for the shot. She'll have another chance. And you can't give her a second go at that. Better than for South Africa in those final few minutes, but Uganda right up in their faces. They went ahead. South Africa pulled them back and a five goal lead in that quarter, 46-33. So, perhaps the last roll of the dice from Uganda as they aim to stop and halt the progress of South Africa, who are 15 away from a semi-final. A couple of changes for both. We'll get to those in just a moment. Up on the scoreboard, though, 46-33 South Africa lead. Bongi and Somi, their captain, back on at that centre position. Back on and press repeat with a feed into the circle and pot heater again. A really solid last five minutes of that third term from South Africa. It was going goal for goal there for a while and then just put on the last five goals to ensure a 15-10 quarter win. So they can turn it on when they need to, South Africa, and I thought they withstood the pressure, I guess, that Uganda were putting on them in terms of how good they were with the ball. So again, ticking some boxes here, South Africa, but they really want to push on in this last quarter and make a bit of a statement in what's probably been a bit of an inconsistent game from them. 
all things considering. Well, they've not been able to change that attacking end, but when it's working so well, there might come a point when Norma Plummer decides to make some changes ahead of what will be another huge match on Thursday night. For the moment, they've got to ride this one out. And we're still dancing okay. around in that circle. So a run of goals on for South Africa. Now to try and feed Barney Mary Chol Hook, who's come on that goal shooter position. Replacing Peace Proskovia. And Chol Hook replaced Peace in the domestic Barney leagues in the UK. A Loughborough Lightning coming in to play in the Super League. She's an incredible talent, incredibly raw still, so there's a lot of development that needs to carry on in her game over the next couple of years. But I'll tell you what, from her very first game in the Super League to her very last game in the Super League this season, improved out of sight to become almost untouchable at times. So you can see the danger in which that she could be for any team in the way she plays the game. And, you know, what a luxury for Uganda to have two goal shooters of that calibre, not only now, but also into the future. She's still incredibly young. Around, go the hook, just 22 years old. Uganda. Love the discussion that's going, going on in that attacking defense. end for South Africa. Just demanding more. Oh, congested again in that midcourt. Oh, and Younger comes to help out. Just the instinct to, knew, to know that the moment was coming to go and have a fly at the ball. Okay, go to it's the timing of it, isn't it? Clean connection. Well, it's it's the timing and it's how clean it is. Like, it's just, it's so rare these days that you see intercepts like that because the game this nowadays, it's so physical. Quite often it's a tip and it's a pick up, but she always comes through on the inside line, two hands on the ball, really textbook type of defense. And look how it's just lifted her side again. Contact causing. Sita, stay beside her. Yes. Potgeeter again with the split. Short on the shot. Opportunity here for Uganda. Just confirmation of those team changes again. As Uganda look to peg South Africa back. Oh, oh I'm sorry! Oh. <laughs> and look at her fly down court. That's the bongi and Sommi we know. Duracell bunny. <laughs> She likes it too, thumbs up. Reads it well, rips it out of the air, full extension. Thunders down court. Still no smile from Norma Plummer though. Oh, she's just so invested. I love watching Norma coach. She really does play every ball, every moment with her players. Nasty. And she sees everything. <laughs> Couple of slips on court. South Africa come away with the ball. Van der Merwe went down first. She's Bunny's back up. Obstruction, we attack. From Somi again. Bunny's obstruction, we attack. And it's the work rate that that Norma will enjoy. Injury. Yeah. Whole <laughs> time South injury, Africa. we attack. So, Rachel Nanyonga swapping over the bibs. It was a short stay on court for Chol Hook. Peace Proskovia back on. Sita, Sita. And well, Mamie back on. Well, this final quarter's run away from them at the okay, moment. 7-1 to South food. Africa. So just not the same Please amount of volume the they were having. Their volume actually in consideration has been not too bad. So 10 in the first quarter, 13 in the second, 10 in the third, but just one with 10 minutes to play. Contact, no one giving an inch on court, one let alone the court, ball. One step up. Yes, that's that goal defense with her. Both you just out. wonder on, at, at this stage of the game whether Norma's now ready to kind of empty the bench and get the players out. They've certainly got the game now to a margin that they'd be happy with. We're up to 20, so... You'd be confident in that margin. Surely. And, you know, she probably needs to think about preserving the players and, and getting them ready for tomorrow night. Obviously, 10 minutes left, always a risk of an injury. Um, or she wants to see these players run it out. So, always fascinating to see how the coaches approach Contact it. Contact goalkeeper. 
for Uganda. It's another tough contest against Jamaica. Six o'clock on Thursday evening UK time. Prescovia against Sterling. How good will that be? We've seen it a few times in Suncorp, or just once actually, and it was an amazing contest between the two. And clearly disappointment for it's Jamaica not at not making the semi-finals. But they don't want to fall far from that top four. Well, it's a danger game, to be honest, because Uganda, we've seen some brilliant netball from them throughout this game. And, you know, obviously winning the second quarter and being right in the contest in the third, if they're able to stay a little bit more disciplined on attack and retaining possession, uh, they can put goals on the board because of Prescovia. So it is a danger game for South Africa, for Jamaica. And... Uh, they were a little bit slow to start against Scotland today, and Scotland made them pay. So you never know what tomorrow might bring. South Africa. For the moment, it's eight and a half minutes left of this final game of the day in Liverpool. And Somi was offering. Riesel came for it. Nearly a little bit of joy. Diesel's okay, been quite good for a South Africa in that wing attack role. Polar opposite style to Bongi. Plays with a little bit more on the body, uses her strength a bit more. The pace is a bit slower, but really, really steady and reliable. So it's been good to see her in a, in a pressurised game because, again, come those finals when South Africa hit that, they might need some impact players off the bench to steady the ship if required. We talk maybe just about that great starting seven that South Africa can have, but I love Msomi in that centre bib as well. Ah, oh, great take from Peace Proskovia. Well, again, she's a polar opposite style and centre to Erin Berger. So Erin's a bit more of a steadying centre, fills the spaces, links the play. And as we know with Bongi Msomi, she can be someone that rips the play apart by how quick she gets down court. So, again, great versatility in the lineup if they I'm need it. Start. Contact with the big. Almost sat on her head then. <laughs> Little bit of leapfrog. Good opening on the baseline. And she times that baseline move to perfection, Marika Holthausen. Such impressive Contact shooting stats for both these teams, actually. 90% for Proskovia, 93 or Yellow, 92 Oh, great work, to that one. <laughs> Just the intimidation over the shot. She really got into the head there. She wasn't really doing much, but not doing much is doing enough sometimes. So, really good shot defence. And just to get up on the rebound, give it a deflection, backed up by the teammates. Going South Africa. So, there's Berger warming down. To her work on court, pushing oh, what a touch. her side. Contact on time. Center, that's persistent contact, that's a caution. Side the center there. Instruction. That was Kizza picking up a caution. Goalkeeper, get your distance. Understandable with some frustration, some tiredness creeping in towards the end of this one. Yeah, a few late challenges, a little bit undisciplined at times. And oh! <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> no lateness from her. No, never is. Instruction, outside, goalkeeper. Outside, outside. So possible options that South Africa have, if they feel like giving the two golden girls are in that circle a little bit of a rest, could bring on Stoltz. Seeing some bib adjustment on the bench at the moment. Might not be a change, though, in that attacking end. Yes. Yeah, they lost a really good player in the build-up to an Inamaru Venter, who's been playing for the Melbourne Vixens in Suncorp. And Venter sits at 192 centimetres and can play both positions. So she's been obviously replaced by Siggy Berger coming in late stages uh, in their preparation. But Berger's obviously had a terrific year with uh, Surrey Storm in the Vitality Netball Super League. And Rinsky Stoltz has also seen some time in that competition too. So they do have very good depth in the shooting circle. We just haven't seen a lot of them throughout this World Cup. Hard to get these two off the court though when yeah. they're playing so well. It's that balance, isn't it? Because both of them won't want to come off court. 
And I think when you think about it too, they don't actually get a chance to play together all that often. So you get to a World Cup and every game is crucial in terms of consolidating your partnerships. Even though they are the choice always when it comes to an international event. The last time they played together before here would have been in the quad series in January. So long time between Think about matches. what you just said. How magical that combination is between them both how well they're both shooting and just that short period of time that they get together absolutely and really complement each other's games quite nicely communicate well balance each other really well and deadly accurate marika sitting at 90 percent and lenise potgita not too shabby either 44 goals at 94 percent norma would be pretty happy with that and certainly the volume of goals too. Just trying to change things around Uganda, around that circle. All the work they're having to do and Pumzamwani again coming out with it. Just the footwork, unbelievable. Getting in the right position. The attack on the ball. And that's where they've been deadly. Every time they've had that opportunity, just bang, 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 bang into the circle. Yeah, the quicker that ball transitions, here's the work again. Full stretch and the backup from our teammates. The quicker you can transition, the more you put the defence under pressure. Bart is contact with the defence. Bart is offside. That's obstruction. Holthausen looking for goal number 21. Good day out from her. I think it's pretty much a good day out for everyone that stepped on court for South Africa. Are you clear who their starting seven is for that, that match-up with England to win the group? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely Pockier and Holthausen through the middle, oh, and Somi Berger the and Van der Merwe through the midcourt, and then you'd be a very brave person not to play Pretorius and Mwani at the back. So, you know, they're going to be in for a great match against England, and England is certainly going to have to do their homework. And, you know, to, to be fair, it's South like Africa have been England's up. bogey team for the past couple of years, so they're going to come in full of confidence and the pressure probably Bloody sits on the shoulders side. of the Roses oh, tomorrow to see how they handle it. It's uh, it's going to be a fascinating Maybe duel and, uh, the yeah, you'd be, again, a brave person to predict an outcome of that game. So I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, just having a, a little look Maybe through those teams that matched up in the quad series. And if you're looking at starting sevens, not really much difference between what's here in Liverpool. I will say this, though, on record. If South Africa beat England tomorrow, they will play in the World Cup final. South Africa will. If they beat England tomorrow. But will they be playing England in that World Cup final? Who knows? <laughs> the voice of Dan Ryan will record every moment of that. All things possible at the moment. But it looks like we're going to have our final four of England, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. In what order will they play each other in those semi-finals? We will find out in the next 24 hours. Still fight left, though, in Uganda as we head into the final couple of minutes for this match. Up next for Uganda, they'll take on Jamaica. That match before England, South Africa take to court. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Are you changing it? <laughs> if, if they beat England tomorrow, they'll win a medal. I think they just need to. Well, they have... will. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> I think they need to have back to back wins against the big Contact nations. Six. And that, if they can do that tomorrow, it's almost their England moment that they had at the Commonwealth Games where they yep. smashed through the semi final. If they can do two of the big nations back to back, Contact. they've done Jamaica. If they can do England tomorrow night, they'll be ready to go. Advantage goal. Contact ball. Keep up. And then do we head back to 2015 in the World Cup when New Zealand beat Australia in the run-up to the finals. That kind of gave Australia the, the kick up the backside that they needed going into that too. Absolutely. Oh, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> so good. How good is it that we have four countries that on their day can win this World Cup? We've never had that before, really, in the history of our sport in reality. So I think it's amazing and full credit to everybody that has got world netball to this stage. It's at the peak of its powers right now. Well, as we head into the final 30 seconds, the world order is about to shift. We are about to have a bit of history at the Netball World Cup. Before the change in format, South Africa had a silver medal, but now since the change to the new World Cup, 
We've never seen South Africa in a semi-final. They're about to do that. They're about to take Norma Plummer through to the semi-finals again. 67-39 the lead as Uganda look to put another goal away of the moment. As we head into the final 10 seconds, the countdown from the crowd. They know they've witnessed a little bit of history, a bit of gloss maybe taken off by Uganda, but no one can take away the history for South Africa. They made the semi-finals of the World Cup for the very first time. Now the emotion comes out, the bench off their feet, onto court. 67-40 the final score, and that will go down in the history books. But Norma Plummer has achieved what she said she would and taken this team into the last four. Well, Norma, semi-final confirmed, and apart from maybe taking your foot off the gas in that second quarter a little bit, that is a job very well done, isn't it? Well, it is, but as I said to you at the start, uh, they're a formidable team, and uh, that's how they play. They're, they're really, you know, one-on-one, -on -one and they stick to it. So we always knew it was going to be a tough, tough seat, uh, but, yeah, you know, can't be too disappointed with a 27-goal win, I guess, but we worked for it. Did you have to have a little word at half-time? I'm sorry, with the crowd, I didn't hear that. I know, it's very noisy here. Did you have to have a little word at half-time, just to remind them? What was at stake? I have a word at every break. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Bongi came off for a, for a rest. A lot of your other players stayed on for a fairly long time. Was that always the plan or did you think, you know, maybe you wanted to rest a few up before the England game? We wanted to get into the final. So, um, you know, we, because we've been changing up, it also doesn't hurt to give your top ones a big run going into that so that they're you know, working on things together. But, you know, I thought um, Izette came on and she's so physically strong, they couldn't hold that. And then put Bo back in the middle, give Erin a rest on the legs. I, they knew all along we'd be running, running legs if we required to do so. As England, of course, tomorrow, you don't have very much time, do you, to prepare? But if you could just sort one thing out from that performance before eight o'clock, what would it be? Uh, have dinner and get to bed early. Thank you very much. Thanks, Norma. Denise, come and join us. Many, many congratulations. You are the player of the match, oh. and you're into a semi-final, yeah. which is quite amazing, isn't it? I mean, um, I think they said since 1995. I, I, we had no words. Like, we were just getting down on our knees and just saying thanks to God for making everything possible with it. Without him, nothing is um, possible, but I'm, just so proud of my team. Um, I wouldn't have been here without them. Um, I think there are so many on that court who should have gotten man of the match. I mean, Pumza, Carla, Maraiku is making me look so good in the circle, taking pressure off, um, everyone feeding. So, up to them. They deserve it as well. It's a very special group of players and an exceptional coach, isn't it? Job's only half done because, as a group, you want to go make more history, don't you? You can go and win this competition. Yeah, um, we would love, we would love to just medal at the competition, and obviously winning would be top priority. We just take it game by day, uh, game by game. We have England tomorrow, which is going to be the toughest of them all so far, and we're obviously not taking them lightly. Just needing to do our homework, and um, we always have a rivalry against them. Um, always a good show, and going up against their crowds going to be interesting. But I mean, I think we can do it. Um, We'll just see what happens on that day. Not just the crowd, is it, that you're up against yeah. Jeeva Mentor? Mm. That is going to be one match-up we all can't wait to see. Yeah, everyone always talks about me and Jeeva. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, yeah, but she's an amazing player. She has got so much experience. And for me to come up against a player that's got so many years behind her, it's just, it helps me grow my game as well and me working under pressure. So I um, can't, can't wait for the match-up. We'll, we'll see how that goes. You can go to bed tonight knowing that you beat them last time, didn't you? Which must help all of you ahead of tomorrow's game. Yeah, um, I think we always have that in the back of our minds. that We have beaten them before, but we know they're a brand new team again. And we know that they're going to come full force. They have the crowd back at them. They have, they're the hosting country. So we forgot about that game because tomorrow night's team is brand new. And we'll just focus on that. Very, very well played today. We are excited about seeing you in action against England tomorrow. Well played. Thank you. Nelson, 
come and join us. Well, you won the second quarter and you pushed them. Norma said you gave them quite a game. What was your assessment? <laughs> it has been a tough game. We started off well, but um, in the middle there we lost track, like in the middle field. Uh, maybe the girls uh, left the game plan, but at least we came back strong and we kept on changing, changing the combinations. Yeah. And Stella, Stella Oyela, it's unbelievable to think she started this tournament playing at centre. She's just given the best goal defence in the world a real run for her money out there. You've got a bit of goal dust, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stella has impressed us as a country, as a team. We are very impressed with our display. She has begun. I think she's ready to go now. And just finally, you can make history, can't you, still at this World Cup? You can finish the highest ever for Uganda. You can do that, can't you? Yeah, we can, we can, we can. We are going to come back strong. We are playing Jamaica tomorrow, and I, I know we are having another last game, so we are going to come stronger. Yeah, but it, it has given us a challenge, but mm, it wasn't easy. Thank you very much. Well played today, Nelson. Thank you.